Today, we're going to be setting up, unboxing, and reviewing the Shure 55 SH version 2, a die-cast cardioid XLR microphone with that sweet 50 style, and some pretty rich vocal clarity right out of the box. This video is primarily aimed at uses for live streamers, YouTubers, and podcasters, and I'm going to let you know if this bad boy is worth a pickup. <laughs> Not a pickup pattern, but buying the sucker. Let's get it. The Shure Radio Company was founded in 1925, that's 96 years ago, and I would say they're right up there with Rode and Blue when it comes to their history and lineage of making high quality microphones. Now I'm not gonna be using this microphone for recording any instruments or singing, it's primarily gonna be used for podcasting, YouTube videos, and live streaming. However, this mic is known for crisp vocal clarity, and more so than all that, I just really genuinely like that 50s swanky swing style microphone. In fact, I actually have one of those tattooed somewhere on my body. It's either on my right booty meat cheek or my left shoulder. I'll let you guess that one. If you guessed my tuchus, I like where your head's at, at, but you would be incorrect. So the microphone that's actually plugged into my iPhone 13 Pro right now is a Shure MV5 USB plug and play microphone. Not the best audio quality. However, it is an extremely compact and lightweight microphone. This, not so much. This has got some weight to it. This is an all metal body. You do have that foam pot filter in there. Some of the features of this microphone, it does have a full swivel design. It does have an on and off switch. This will always remain on because with my mixer over here, my Go XLR, I do have several buttons on there that I can mute to different sources, whether that be my live stream, or to my Discord, or muting the microphone altogether. The build quality on this thing feels phenomenal. One complaint that I have heard from other tech reviewers and YouTubers is that this threading right here is incredibly close to where your XLR cable is gonna go. Depending on what boom arm you're using, you might have a little bit of clearance issues. Now I'm on the blue compass over here, which I stand behind 110%, so hopefully we won't have any clearance issues with that included adapter. It looks like it is going to be tight, and that's just a poor design. I don't know why they don't kick this out a little bit further, whatever. Now in the box, you really don't have a whole heck of a lot of accessories. You just have the bubble wrap that your microphone is wrapped in. You do have an adapter here for your boom arm. And this little piece of documentation here, which is just a warning telling you not to use this thing like a Frisbee and not to try and choke yourself out with the cord. You do also have your limited warranty. This is good for this amount of months or years. And you have your user guide over here. Hey. It's a microphone. Hey, it's a cardioid pattern. You talk into the front of it. Hey, it's XLR. You gotta have a mixer or USB audio interface. The cartridge is shock mounted to avoid noise or buzzing, and it does have this rugged die casting design. Let's get this thing hooked up to my mixer and see what the out-of-the-box sound profile is like. Alrighty, Stallions, over here at the PC, what you're hearing currently is a $100 Blue Ember XLR microphone. We're gonna get this bad boy removed and use all the same mixer settings except for the decibel gain and see what she sounds like. Gotcha, bitch. So this is in the software suite for my Go XLR microphone. This is a dynamic, unlike the Blue Ember, which is a condenser microphone. And also the Blue Ember, I generally have at about 36 decibels of gain. And this is around 54 at a good talking volume right now, not clipping or anything. These are the settings for my noise gate over here. These are my equalizer settings that I use for virtually any XLR microphone, whether it's condenser or dynamic. These are the settings that I got from Harris Heller, AKA the Stream Doctor at Alpha Gaming YouTube channel. These are my compressor settings. And I have my DSer set at 40. Let's get a little bit of background music fading in like I would have on stream. Yeah, now we're talking. Red team go, blue team go. Yeah, baby girl, put a little echo on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That mic is super hot, girl. It's time to give them the business, baby girl. How does the sure sound? Is it slapping tits back with the audio quality? I don't know. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, that's the money shot. Now I do have the microphone about three and a half to four inches away from my mouth. Let's sink in a little bit of background music here and I'm gonna run a couple of tests here. So I'm gonna test some of the off axis noise rejections. So this is front on on the capsule of the cardioid pattern here. Let's go on the side over here. I'm off on the right side. I'm off on the left side. I'm hitting it from the back right now. This is noise rejection from the rear of the microphone. Now let's test some of the plosives. Peter Piper pickled a pepper. Peter Piper pickled a pepper. I'm on pickle patrol with Patricia. Now let's test some of the S's. Now I do have my DSer set at 40, so that will cut out some of those harsh S's, but let's see how she sounds. Sandy sells she shells down there by the seashore. She also sells her sentimental secrets that she bought at Victoria's Secret. Sally likes to serenade with stallions, scallywags, and sailors. Now I'm gonna talk relatively quiet right now. Let's go ahead and pause the background music. I'm talking very quietly. Now granted, I do have a compressor on there, so it should boost up the quiet sound. Maybe I'm listening for footsteps in a game or something. 
But then I get excited because I just busted a 360 no scope slide cancel tomahawk throwing grenades swinging deluxe and I get a little bit excited and I get loud. Woo, baby. <laughs> I slapped him six ways from sundown. Sounds good. It was never clipping. It was never in the red. That's what I like to see. Now let's see if there's any handling noise right now. I'm rubbing the body of the microphone. Relatively aggressively. You like that right there? Is that good for you? It's good for me. Let's go ahead and turn the microphone off. You can't hear jack shit because I turned off the, the, the power to it. I mean, honestly, having my XLR cable kinked up like this, it's probably going <laughs> to permanently shut itself off here pretty soon. After listening to that back, I genuinely do like the out-of-the-box sound profile. Well, it's not out-of-the-box because I'm using my personalized equalizer and compressor and noise gate settings, but the same settings that I use with any other microphone. And I have to say it actually sounds really good and it looks absolutely phenomenal. Now, a huge downside or con that I think will stop a lot of people from buying this microphone is this clearance issue right here with the XLR port. Now, I'm sure there's some kind of third-party adapter. If there is, I'll have it pop up on screen here, not only a picture, but also the price, and that will be linked in the description below, as I most likely am going to pick up that exact same adapter for myself, because I do plan on using this microphone for the foreseeable future, but I do feel like down the road, I most likely will switch back to my Blue Ember. Not only do I think it sounds phenomenal, and it also looks very, very good, but because it is such a streamlined and thin microphone, when you're doing something like gaming where you don't want something in your peripheral vision distracting you, this thin little microphone is a great option. This is a little bit more bulky of a body, and I got nothing against a nice thick body. In fact, I get a lot of pleasure from that, uh, microphone-wise. But I do feel like down the road, you know, call it woman's intuition, call it spider sense, but I do think I am going to jump back to my Blue Ember. I'm pretty loyal, and she's been good to me. But I do have to say that this bad boy sounds hot. Once I get this XLR cable clearance issue all sorted up, I will make a follow-up video and also give you guys a little bit more of my thoughts after testing this bad boy for a couple more months. If you enjoyed this Honest Microphone review, liking the video will help it to get seen by more streamers and YouTubers, so this information will reach and assist them as well and help them make a decision if this microphone is right for their needs. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing and Honest Gaming peripheral reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. I'll see you next time. Peace.